Hello, my friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day that everybody is home preparing for the hurricane that's heading our way, heading Texas, heading Mississippi, all the way uh, the Gulf of Mexico. And we are right in the middle. And when yesterday friends were posting that the eye of the storm and I thought about a song that we used to sing, even in the eye of the storm, he remains in control. And today the song that was on my heart was leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, every time we hear of any news, any news that disturbs us, we are overwhelmed and if you have the TV going right now, which a lot of us have in uh, Louisiana, we have it on on the Weather Channel, and we are just like glued to the Weather Channel. And the man last night was just making a lot of like movements, and he was all excited, like excited, and he's coming this way, and it's going to do this, and it's going to do that, and just putting a lot of fear in people. But we are wise. We are going to get prepared for the storm that's coming. And in fact, yesterday morning, um, Lori, who is our children's pastor, had given me the opportunity to speak at the chapel yesterday. And I brought a message that I was so excited about. And I got the kids so excited about, yes, we have to bring our friends to Jesus, just like this story that I'm gonna go into in Mark. And it was so strong in my heart. And it was so exciting to see all the cars, the kids at school. But then when they were dismissed yesterday afternoon, everybody's home today preparing. It's such a calm day. I wanted to leave my window open. It is raining a little bit, but nothing like what the hurricane winds can do. My prayer is that it will just pass over us, will pass over us with peace, and will just go and go and dissipate and whatever it means and whatever it's gonna do, just bring rain for the uh, trees. But I'm praying for the beautiful trees in our church parking lot and around the yards and all back everywhere that they will be strongly rooted in the ground so nothing will shake them. I have an olive tree outside and it had just started growing where I was so excited. So I'm praying for my olive tree. I'm praying for my fig trees. And it doesn't matter what's heavy on your heart, what is important to you. And of course, we picked up the patio furniture, put everything in the garage and things that could harm uh, by flow flying everywhere. But as I was thinking, I said, Lord, thank you that our security is in you. When people used to ask my dad over and over, Brother Samuel, aren't you afraid to fly so much when there's so much danger happening on airplanes? And daddy would say, our security is in Christ. We are in Christ. No matter what comes our way, we are in Christ and Christ is in us. And he brings us through walking with us through every storm. So yes, we are preparing for the storm and the men in the family have worked hard to get the generators ready, going, so that we won't lose electricity. And this morning I was thinking, you know, electricity is very important to us, yes, but I have friends that live with one hour a day of electricity they, they get. One friend from Lebanon told me it's so natural for us to be that way. It's just that we depend so much on these things and I was thinking, I wonder if I can find a coffee maker that's battery operated, except we do put um, a pot on the fire, like if we make a barbecue pit or whatever and get the hot water so we can drink our Nescafes without any, um, you know, stopping it. But I am thankful that our trust is on the Lord. We are leaning on him today. And Mark 2nd, Mark chapter 2nd tells of a story that when I went to study it yesterday, I found it in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So it was important what Jesus did here was so important. And when you are reading the story, it is very exciting because it starts from chapter 2, verse 1. And Jesus is in a house. 
He entered into Capernaum and everybody knew that Jesus is in this house. They don't tell you whose house it is. It could be Peter's house because Peter, Peter lived in Capernaum. But whoever's house it was, that there was no upsetting or this person didn't get upset that the house was so full of people that there was no more room in the house. And I was thinking, wow, if that happened here and all the way to the door and outside and, and people are here because Jesus is here, how exciting is that? But there were four friends that were so uh, concerned for their friend who was a paralyzed man. This was their friend and this friend of theirs could not get to Jesus, but these friends found out they couldn't get to Jesus just walking in the house because it was so crowded and people probably were saying, hey, don't go up. I mean, there's no more room. What are you trying to do? And I told the kids yesterday, you know, they were coming to the streets of, this is clearly saying Capernaum. So there were people there too. So they were trying to maneuver because it says they brought the man on his couch or on his bed, whatever he was laying on. They picked it up. They decided it was better than just hanging onto the man's arms and legs like, Sometimes my grandchildren will do that, and I'm so afraid they're going to pull things out of socket. But they picked up this man in his bed, came to the house. When they found out that they couldn't go into the house because it was so full, Jesus was in there, but they were determined to get their friend to Jesus. You know what they did? They climbed on the roof. And I know the roofs at that time. Yesterday when I was talking with my uh, granddaughter, Hava, she was saying, Miss Mama, it was like probably mud-packed roof. Yes, it could have been. But whatever it was, it says they broke down the roof. They broke it. So things started falling down, but they knew exactly where Jesus was. So they all had to climb up there because not one person could have lowered that couch in front of Jesus. So here they're climbing on this house. They're breaking the house. They are determined to do everything they can to bring their friends to Jesus. You and I have a calling. We are called to go and preach the gospel. We are called to go and tell people the good news. So we need to do everything we can to bring everyone that we meet that needs Jesus to bring him to Jesus. Point to Jesus, not to us. We're not bringing them to us. We're bringing them to Jesus. That's why when people look at you to fill needs in their life, we, we need to point them to Jesus. Yes, the Lord will use us, but we are not the source of everything. The Lord Jesus is the source. Life comes from him. For God so loved the world, he gave Jesus that whosoever in his beloved son, because the angel told Mary, his name will be called Jesus and he will be called the son of God. This son of God was given so that you and I can believe in him and have everlasting life. When we believe he's resurrected from the dead, because we have to believe he's alive so that we will live with him forever. And these four men, when they brought the men to Jesus, lowered him right in front of Jesus, it says Jesus saw their faith. It is so incredible because it says in verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, so the Lord saw the faith of these men. He sees, he knows what's in your heart. It doesn't matter what you're saying with your mouth. And sometimes you try to say things with your mouth so that your heart and mind can believe. You have to believe in your heart. Here they saw, Jesus saw their faith. And then when we read, he heals and tells the man, arise, in verse 11, arise, take up your bed, go your way into your house. Take up your bed, go your way into your house. So he was healed. And of course, when we read all the verses, he's also spiritually, the Lord has forgiven him his sins before anything else. And people are so upset because he was saying, your sins are forgiven you. That was the first need of this person. But the second thing was his body and the Lord healed him. When we come to him for prayers, for healing, we come to him, we say, Lord, you are able to do this. We are praying for my friend's daughter for healing. And I appreciate 
So many people have been praying. So many people have been writing me and asking about him, Deborah. And she lives in Belgium. She's seven years old, battling cancer right now. But we believe, her mom and I, we both believe that God is able to do this miracle. We're standing there waiting for the Lord to do the miracle. But we bring her to the Lord Jesus. We lay her at his feet and say, Lord, we need a miracle. And the Lord sees our faith. It says here, when the Lord saw their faith, and then verse 11, arise, take up your bed, and he was healed. But the friends are the ones that I am just want to be like. I want to be like those friends that are so determined that everyone I meet, I, it's not like everyone I come across, but sometimes there is that one-on-one -on -one that happens. Yes, I give them the cross or I give them a verse or I encourage them, but one-on-one -on -one I tell them, for God so loved them, if they only believe in their heart, confess with their mouth, they will be saved and God will give them eternal life. That is the gift. And that is what our message is today. Yes, we are waiting for a hurricane, but our hope is in the Lord. We're leaning on his everlasting arms. And thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the concerns from other parts of the world and other states. We all have our protection in the Lord today. The Lord bless you today.